Identifying Stereotypes Well, hello and welcome back. Today we are going to talk about stereotypes. Before we go on with the topic, let's have a look at the following task. Task name, Finders. Your task is to find someone who appears to match each description in the chart on this slide. For example, if Sue seems like the sort of person that would enjoy classical music, I would approach her and say, You look like you enjoy classical music. You have hands like a piano player. My name is Joe. What is your name? I would then write down Susan's name for that entry and continue the hunt. Please complete the task and submit your answers in our Q&A section. Have a look at this slide. How did it go? I hope you did well. Now, let's talk about stereotypes. One of the biggest barriers to diversity is stereotypes. Stereotypes can be subtle that we don't even realize we're applying them. The human mind thinks in categories, and we need these categories to help us organize all that we experience as we go through daily life. Without categories, our brains would be filled with a jumble of disconnected facts, impressions, sights, sounds, thoughts, ideas, and sensations. The categories help us make sense of the world we live in and give us a shorthand way to respond to people and events. The categories in our minds contain not just facts and data, they also contain meaning and evaluation. Our categories are not neutral. We usually have feelings about categories. These feelings may be positive or negative. Mention of a category often triggers an instant reaction, almost a reflex. Most of us have judgments, opinions, and feelings about most categories of things. This is appropriate and normal. While categories are not a problem in and of themselves, they become a problem when we cannot distinguish between the characteristics of a category and the characteristics of an individual item or individual person within that category. Put another way, the category turns into a stereotype when we can no longer see an individual tree, but only see the forest. When we assume that all trees within a forest are identical and cannot see that each individual tree has some characteristics in common with the others, that is when our category turns into a stereotype. A common defense is, stereotypes are sometimes true. Stereotypes, by their very definition, cannot be true. For example, think of the stereotype that all African American men are good at basketball. Some African American men may be very good at this sport, but there are certainly African-American men out there who are not good at this sport. Therefore, for the man who is good at basketball, that is simply an attribute of his character, not proof that all African-American men are the same as he is. Let's have a look at some common phrases and the stereotype behind them. There are many phrases that connote stereotypes and are derogatory. One that I often hear directed towards women is, geez, you must be on your period. This reveals two stereotypes. If a woman is on her period, she must be cranky, and vice versa, if a woman is cranky, she must be on her period. No thought is given to the other possible factors, or even to the possibility that perhaps the female in question is being assertive and isn't cranky. Now, let's look at this task. Think of a situation where you were seriously misjudged by the people around you. It may be that they underestimated your education, your experience, or your overall competence to make a contribution to whatever was being considered. Ask yourself, what does it feel like to be stereotyped? What did people say or do, what were the cues, that gave you the impression that they didn't really appreciate your talents? How did their behavior and your interpretation of it affect what you did or said?